व्यक्ति को आपने ही मन को गहराई बड़ा हमें ले उजागर कर सकते हों बाबू यहाँ रहता तो तो ज्ञान लाइक कसरी उजागर करने भनेरा महर्षि महेश्वर के लिए वड़ा विश्व विख्यात टेक्नोलॉजी निर्माण करने वो जस लाइव वहाँ ले नाम देने वो ट्रांसेंडेंटल मेडिटेशन भावाती ध्यान रा यदि जोश आपलाई उजागर करने पर नहीं होना चाहिए। यदि व्यक्ति जागरूक बन सके, चेतनशील बन सके, कॉन्शस बन सके, बने उसले जीवन को पायला पायला में ज्ञान हासिल करने होना चाहिए। तो सर था, आज महर्षि विश्वविद्यालय ले संसार का तमाम लाहू विद्यार्थियों लाई चेतना में आधारित ज्ञान दिए कुछ कॉन्शसनेस बेस्ड पहले ही पनी जॉब ले सुनो उधर ही ना तो यू अभिव्यक्ति का साथ वर्ल्ड का लीडिंग साइंटिस्ट औरो साइकोलॉजिस्ट औरो फिजियोलॉजिस्ट औरो उन्हें वाले महर्षि ले साथ दिए रा अमेरिका जस्तो ये वाला स्ट्रेस्ड कंट्री में ये वाला विशाल डिग्निफाइड यूनिवर्सिटी स्टैबलिश कर सकता मनु वो � एजुकेशन शब्द एडुकेरे बड़ा शब्द आए कुछ है एडुकेरे जोन लैटिन शब्द है इसको अर्थ क्यों बने टू अनफोल्ड आवर अवेयरनेस फ्रॉम इनसाइड आउट टू अनफोल्ड द नॉलेज फ्रॉम इनसाइड आउट भीतर को ज्ञान ला बाहर उजागर करने जीवन को वास्तविक ज्ञान हो बने घरे ही पुस्तक और उपन्यास बने को घरे जानकारी Maharshi International University and hundreds of Nepalese students have benefited in their lives mentally, physically, emotionally, environmentally from every aspect of their lives. They have been very, very successful and you will be knowing about the success and about the process of everything from our respected Dean Greg Guthrie, who is also the Dean of the uh, academic program, who is also working with us for the last many, many years. And we have in front of us uh, is uh, Elan Guthrie, who is also Chief Administrative Officer. They will be speaking and answering your questions. And with this welcome, warm welcome, I would like to um, draw your attention to the presentation of Dr. Greg Guthrie. Now I would like to invite Dr. Greg to, I think he had some PowerPoint presentations and I would like to hand over the microphone to Dr. Greg Guthrie. Thank you very much. Uh, it's wonderful to be able to connect with all of you here and uh, our, to be able to discuss with you and describe to you the our program in computer science, advanced computer science, and not just advanced computer science, but in advanced education in general. And education, education is a, a very nice word. Uh, it, it means it's, there's two parts. It comes from Latin. It says educare, edu, ed, to bring out, encare, light, to bring out the light. And so the idea of education is to bring out the light. What light? The light of, of you, of the student. And that means that it's really the goal of education is to realize the full potential of the individual, the full potential of, of every individual, of every student. And that's what our educational system is. It's focused on, on you on your full potential and your full value in life, your full value to yourself, your full value to the world as well. And what we wanna to describe today is our program at Maharshi International University for doing that. So I'll, I'll give a, a, a couple of, of overview slides on that describing it, and then we'll come back and have some questions and answers. And Ms. Elaine Guthrie, who is, 
as Madhav has described, who is the director of admissions and the whole program administratively will also give some comments. So our, our program is called the Computer Professionals Program. And the professionals means that this is not just some sort of purely academic program to do research, although our, our students have gone on for PhDs and such at, at top level universities, but it's really a more applied program, applied for people that wish to be out and learn the knowledge and then apply it in different companies and professional settings. Uh, our university is in Iowa, so it's wonderful that with this modern technology, although there may be a couple of clicks and buttons here to get connected, that we really are connected around the world to you and, and to people from other countries as well. And thus the term that we have for the University of International University is really very appropriate because we bring in students from all around the world from 70 or 80 countries every year to study here at our university in the central US area. Uh, Fairfield, Iowa is a small town that we're in. And if you're coming from a large area, a large city of maybe famous cities in Nepal, you'll find this to be a very comfortable, safe, beautiful environment, very family oriented. My name is, as was mentioned, Dr. Guthrie, and I'm the professor. I teach in the graduate program here. I teach advanced courses in programming languages and in software development at the graduate level, the more advanced graduate level courses, which involve some applications and also some theory. Uh, we are a computer science department, and that means that this is a, a, a rigorous graduate university level academic program. So while it does include professional aspects and professional placement and coming to the US with a, a very important and valuable job placement component of it in the practicum phase, it's an academic program. And that means that you would look forward to really learning a lot of, of more advanced things and, and deeper levels of knowledge in computer science and then going out and applying them. So both both knowledge and experience, knowledge and experience, and both are really important, not only to enjoy the maximum of a degree, a college advanced degree, but also to benefit most from it. The things I'd like to talk about then are the technical job market in the US a little bit, because that is a part of our professional aspect of the program. Creativity and education, that is, how it is that we actually optimize your intelligence, not just what you're learning, but, but your ability to know and to perform and to apply that in the job. And we call that consciousness-based education. And I'll explain all of that. It's a very simple, but very basic and important idea that we feel that almost all uni other universities have really missed. They've gone for the content of education, this book, that paper, this topic, but they've missed the development of the student. So we, we put the two together and that's a very unique thing at our university. And then from that, we'll talk about the details of the format, how, how we actually structure the degree program. And from that, the finances, because the program is not only unique in how we present it, but how we make it available to international students to be able to come here and study. Otherwise, it can be quite difficult. And then Elaine will talk about the admissions requirements and the application process. And together, we'll take questions and answers over the whole thing. So we'll try and get through it quickly this morning. I guess it's this evening for you. Uh, so Maharshi International University, the computer science department, and our master's degree, and how that fits into this COMPRO, as I said, computer professionals program, co-op program. The results of, the, of our program are threefold, really. They are the advanced academic graduate degree from our university. And secondly, this professional experience, not internship or cooperative part-time, but full professional top-level experience. And from that, from that fully paid practicum, from that working, 
the ability to have the program be largely self-financing. So the advanced degree and the experience in the fully paid are three things that our program has that I think we can safely say no other program has, no other program around. And that's why the program has been so successful and so popular globally. So Maharshi University, International University, I'll let me introduce it a little bit for those that may not be familiar, was founded by Maharshi Mahesh Yogi in 1973. And the idea that Maharshi presented was just what I'd mentioned before, to add this missing element of consciousness to modern education. And consciousness means your intelligence. It means the intelligence of the student. Not that education is labs and software and libraries and buildings and faculty. Yes, all very important. But what's the main thing that makes a university? It's, it's students. None of those would exist or be here except for students. So inner intelligence of the students to develop your potential while you're studying. And Maharshi then founded this university with that goal to include the students as a main goal and a main component of education. But how to do that is a nice idea or proposal, but how to do it. And he in fact had a specific technology, which as Mr. Madhav has described, is now well proven and scientifically researched over the last 50 plus years. And that's what we apply at our university. So the goal of education should definitely be more knowledge in our area of studying computer science, other areas, perhaps business, math, literature, so on, it should be more success and more happiness. Why, why have a higher degree? Why, why have a job? Because you want more happiness in life. So the goal of education should be a better life. It needs to have that, that holistic balance, that holistic approach. And that means not just book learning, not just learning things, not just learning Java, C Sharp, C++, programming language, OS, security. Those are all very important, but they're not enough. They're not enough. So let's talk for a moment about technology and how technology that we do teach and how we incorporate it into the degree. And technology is, of course, such a growing important aspect of, of every element of life. There's more computers than there are people in the world now. And we all know IoT and cloud and big data. Computers and technology are, are dominating elements of life and integrating it all around the world. We're all able to meet together today because of technology, because of online internet and software. And software is the basis of everything we do. And from this then the technology market is growing. And in the United States, as an example, it's estimated there's going to be over a half a million new technology or almost half a million new technology jobs in 2024. That's coming up in just a few years, a half a million new jobs. Now this is all technology, not just software, but it includes software and software development. And in the software area, there are almost 10 times more US computing jobs open now than there were students graduating with computer science that is software degrees. So you look at the chart here, it shows the jobs 10 times almost the amount of people graduating. What does that mean? Well, we all know the law of supply and demand. Where there's more demand for something than there is supply, then that becomes a precious resource. That's us, a precious resource. Now, what does that mean? That means that the market is so anxious and so desiring of this that jobs are easy to find and they're at a very high level. High level means good in all areas. There are typically 4.4 million jobs with salaries of from $100,000 up to even, even $200,000, $300,000 US. Huge salaries, huge amounts, and wonderful jobs in the area. But to get that, what's the most important skill to have? And employers report that something so-called soft skills are one of the hardest things. They're over 30% over of the employers report. That's the hardest thing to find. And that means soft skills means you. It means your personality, it means your communication, it means your balance, it means your problem solving, your ability to work well with others, the ability to be easy and kind on yourself when there's a lot of pressure in the job from a time schedule and delivery coming up. Soft skills, hard skills, yes, absolutely important. 
knowing about things that are the technical details of computer science. But notice, less than it's 50% less of the soft skills. So you are the most important thing to an employer. You are. What you know, that can always be improved and will always be improved with continuing education. So how can we do that? How can we be successful in this growing market? Well, that means, of course, a strong academic background, undergraduate degree basis in computer science, an advanced degree, <coughs> pardon, a more advanced degree means a more advanced job. Advanced job means more scope, more opportunities, more areas of impact, and, and, and to increase these personal qualities, creativity, balance, and intelligence. Well, there's many, many universities that have the first of these two advanced degrees and strong academic details, but not so many, in fact, none that I know of have a way to guarantee, not just to promise or to talk about, to guarantee this increase in personal qualities, this increase in you. How do we do that? Well, one easy way to think of it is that our brain is like our CPU and everything we do is controlled by and defined by our brain. We know if our brain, something goes wrong, then the body doesn't work right or the feelings are not right or anything. So, so if the brain doesn't work right, nothing's good. And in fact, the idea is that what, how do we gain a brain structure? We gain it from activity. Whatever we do, that's how we learn it. Uh, in a simple example, you want to learn how to ride a bicycle. You don't read a book. <laughs> you don't read a book. You try it. And then you gain, what do they call it? Muscle memory. Muscle memory really means you rewire the neurons in your brain. You know how to do it. Play the piano. You don't read a book. You do it. And by doing it, you train yourself. You train your brain. You train your neurons how to do it. This is called the self-adapting structure of our brains. Our brains adapt to whatever we do. So in some sense, you are what you do. You are what you do. And that means that if we want to somehow have a brain structure, a system run by that CPU, which is more balanced, which is more inclusive, which is more aware, more awake, we need to have some practice we can have, which will do that, which will give us the experience of being more awake, of being more balanced, of being more settled. And that's what we've adapted here at our university and I'll describe. So our experience determines our brain, and our brain determines what we can do. So there's a feedback loop, and we all know those, these feedback loops from computer science. It's recursion, right? It's recursion, something affects itself, affects its source. This recursive mind-body connection. So how can we optimize our brain to do that? Well, a counter example would be that we know that stress and fatigue are bad. When we're tired, when we're stressed up, we don't feel good, the body doesn't work good, the body, in fact, gets ill, becomes ill, gets sick, brain loses clarity, and we lose capability. What's the solution? Common sense. Rest, a good quality of rest relieves that. And it allows the brain to become more clear. And I would note here, this is automatic. When we get some rest, we go to sleep at night, we don't think, oh, now I'm going to change my brain waves, and now I'm going to change the frontal cortex, how it works, and now I'm going to change my blood chemistry. Indeed, all these things change. Everything in the body goes to optimize itself during a period of rest, but it's automatic. It's not some idea or something we think about or that we do. The body and system does it automatically. And from this, it automatically provides increased, increased health, creativity, and intelligence. So brain optimization, what we have is we have a technique that does just this. We have this technique called Transcendental Meditation Program that was mentioned earlier. And this program just does exactly that. It gives us a deeper quality of rest, a deeper quality of, of silence, of balance than even during a night's sleep. And when exposed to that, it gives more purification for the mind and body than we would have gotten just from the kinds of rest we we're getting before. So here it is, very simple logic. To 
optimize our system, we need to provide an experience that goes in that direction. The body and system will automatically adapt that and optimize. And so we have this transcendental meditation program. The name is a classical name. It's been used for 50 years when it was taught around the world when scientific research first began on the program. We might have given it some other name, mental improvement technique number 53B or something, but but we stick with the traditional name that was used. And just to note that like sleep, it's automatic and natural. And the result is more mental clarity, more creativity, more balance, more stability, better health, better intelligence. So this is something that is not an idea or a proposal or a research area. 50 years of research documenting it. Let me give a, a quick overview of some of the neuroscience of how this works, just so as scientists, computer science scientists, we can understand how it works. Well, the main idea is, as I said, to increase the coherence of our brain. And one way we can measure that is by what's called brain wave coherence. That is how the different areas of the brain work together. We all might have that idea of right brain and left brain, and one half is for sort of artistic and balance and aesthetics, and the other half is for quantitative problem solving sort of mathematics. And the way that the different areas of the brain work together is how we function. And what this shows is that in measuring this, and these, this is a picture top down of the measurement of the EEG activity in the brain, that just closing our eyes, just that simple act of closing our eyes, the way our brain functions changes. And this shows that the way that it changes is these red areas are more coherent. Coherent means they're working together. They're not chaotic and all trying to do something different. They're working together. So just closing our eyes, and we know that. We know if we just close our eyes, we feel more settled. We we feel more balanced. Someone says, solve this complicated problem. And we say, all right, let me think. Let me think a minute. Let me close our eyes. Oh, yes, 23 or whatever the answer is. So just closing our eyes has that effect. But in fact, if we in fact practice this transcendental meditation technique where there's a greater level of rest, a greater level of balance, look what happens. That amount of coherence of the brain functioning together in a coherent manner becomes much greater. And in fact, notice how it reaches forward in the brain toward the area in the front, which is called the frontal cortex, which is called the chief operating officer, the CEO of the brain. It controls how the two halves of the brain, brain has two main halves, how these function together. Very important result, a result not seen from other things that we do. Even in the best rest that we get at night, it doesn't achieve this. So here we have it. We have a technique which can change the way our brain functions and give it more coherence, more clarity, more effectiveness. And in fact, this EEG coherence, although it's a scientific technical measure of some details, it seems like of the brain, it's really correlated with everything that's good about what the brain does. Creativity, IQ, learning, everything. Uh, one thing that of course is important to education is this idea of intelligence, higher IQ. So IQ, we know intelligent quotient. You might know it doesn't measure how much you know, how many books you read or how many degrees you have. What it does is it measures your ability to know things. That's why it can be taken at different area, ages of life or different stages of education. And it's thought to be fixed. If you're smart, you're smart. If you're not, good luck. <laughs> your IQ doesn't change. It's fixed. You can measure it at different ages. But in fact, that's not true. That's not true. What we find is if we can increase this connectivity, this coherence, this functioning of the brain, that all of these, including IQ, increase. So you become smarter. You literally become smarter, not just more educated, but you become smarter. In a longitudinal study done at a large U.S. university, one group, just we studied them as they went through their education at the university for four years. Uh, the IQ is higher at a, an university because they have higher entrance standards than the average. It's 116, 100 would be average. And those practicing TM, look at this, almost 10% increase in their intelligence. And again, I'll emphasize, 
This isn't what they learn, what books, what degree, what area, what discipline. It's their ability to know, not just during school, but for the rest of their life. This is an investment in yourself for the rest of your life. We call this consciousness-based education, consciousness-based education, because consciousness means your consciousness, your wakefulness, your awareness, your creativity. What are you conscious of? What are you able to know? So what are you able to know in every area? So again, not just academic, but in your professional life, your family life, your personal life, every area. And at our university, all students practice the transcendental meditation technique. And these results then have been scientifically demonstrated and published in many, many different peer reviewed conferences and publications over the last, this should say 50 years now. Uh, and it's a well-known phenomena. And the basic principle is so simple. Mind and body are intimately connected, and we grow both of them at our university. So this is our, our approach to education, and let me speak a little bit about our Master's of Science in Computer Science degree, our MSCS degree. Uh, we call it, again, the COMPRO because of this professional aspect with the placement involved in it as well. And the program has been of great interest to people, all our students are all around the world. Uh, and this, this was a snapshot at one point in time of 34,000, this number is up very high now. And in fact, as we'll point out later, we've grown to be either the or one of the largest computer science master's programs in the United States. So let me say a little bit about the program structure. The program is a unique contribution combination of these three things I've mentioned, development of creativity intelligence through this transcendental meditation program, advanced graduate study, the academics of the degree, and the professional work experience. And we combine these by having on-campus study, the off-campus practicum, and supporting that through distance education. And then the implication of that also is that this combination of work and study allows for very easy finances and earnings, okay? So I'll come back in a moment to how these two things connect. This is not academic, but it's part of the practical impact of the program. The program begins with full-time on campus, regular as you're familiar with from your undergraduate degree, in-class studies with the faculty and other students for about eight months. And then you complete the coursework through distance education, regular online, and we have, of course, learning management systems and all the standard online tools plus online connections with the faculty. This is while you're working in an advanced IT position. It has the same curriculum that you would study on campus and faculty use video lectures, text and internet to provide full support to you. So in fact, it is the same courses that others are studying on campus. Some take on, some take off. This is not mixed mode education while you're on campus. It's full in class with the faculty while you're on campus. The academic structure, <coughs> perhaps easiest to compare it to the traditional semester system. Semester system, you would study perhaps 10 courses in an advanced uh, degree, a master's degree. And it would be two semesters typically sometimes or quite often in fact, three semesters. Uh, you would take maybe five courses each semester uh, one semester, then the second semester, and a third semester if you needed to finish it. Well, one of the first things we do is we change that. We flip it on its side, and we have what's called the block system. And in the block system, you study one course at a time. So you don't go in the morning from algorithms to OS to database, something like that, and then at the end of the semester, have all of your exams, finals week, you know, known to be a burnout and a stress. Instead, you study one course at a time. You study algorithms and then programming language and programming languages too and so on. So it makes it much easier on the student because it allows complete focus on every course while you're studying it and not with your attention on anything else. And you're in class all day, every day with the same group of students doing projects, working together in teams and working with your faculty. And then at the end of that block, you have all presentations, exams, final projects and so on. Then you go on to the next course. This allows you to take multiple courses in a row. If you had three courses in a specialization, as we do, you do one here, and then when you finish it, you do the second one. Well, then you've got to stay on to do a third or a fourth. So 
It makes coursework much more sequential to build on itself, which is an important thing for graduate studies. Well, given this structure, a standard MS program, which, which we do have also without the Compro format, is one year, it would be 10 courses. And in the block system then, you would start at the beginning and go through and take 10 courses and graduate. But we've changed that for this Compro format. We split this basically into two parts. The first approximately six courses are on campus, regular full-time study, and then the other four are in DE, distance education, while you're working in this practicum. And I'll describe that then. So six plus four is 10, and you have all the courses for your degree. So we start then with these six courses, perhaps plus or minus one, if you needed an additional introductory course or if you needed some further help, about eight months on campus. And then when you finish that portion, you haven't yet finished the degree, of course, then you go out for a practicum job placement. And we have a very uh, well-established and substantial whole department that helps you with that and works for job placement. We'll say a little bit more about the practicum and job placement later. And then when you find a job, and I say you find a job because it, it's your choice, what job you want, where you want to work, what kind of company you want to work for. They interview you, they don't interview us. Uh, we're not gonna go out and work. So you get a job with our help and then you work. And while you're working, you work full time in this practicum. That's the top half of this part working what's called CPT. CPT is a, a legal governmental visa status, curricular practical training. Practical training means it's part of your academic degree. So you're working full-time in that. And while you're doing that, you're finishing your academics through this distance education. So you had four months left. Each course, which was one month full-time on campus, becomes four months part-time while you're remote. Four times four is about 16. So this will be about 16 to 20 months, including vacations and breaks and so on. And there you are. Then you have finished your degree and the result is 24 to 30 months to finish the degree. And at the end of that, you have all of your coursework finished. You have worked for 20 to 24 months approximately. So almost two years in this advanced placement practicum and you have met all the requirements for the graduate degree. Uh, it's wonderful. Uh, there's only one challenge here, <laughs> I would say. One challenge, that's the financial challenge. It still costs money to go to school in the US. And big schools, well-known schools on the semester system, costs can be quite high. They can be 50, 60, $80,000 to finish a graduate degree in a technical or an applied area. Well, we have the block system, not the semester system, but, but still it costs because you have your room and your board and the faculty and classes and tuition. It's a little less, we're a smaller university uh, and we have optimized costs, but still it would cost something. So, so what, what are we gonna do? Well, in some sense, it's not a problem because we know that in the placement job, you're going to, with high starting salaries, and starting salaries are quite high for the program. Average is $92,000 US average. And many are over $100,000 US. So you're gonna have a lot of money out here, but you need it to have here. What, what do we do in computer science? We know this, it's called a bootstrapping problem, right? You need something to start it up to get going. And the solution is that we provide that bootstrapping. So what we have is a very low initial payment not 50, 60, 80,000, but three, four, 5,000 typically. It depends on your qualifications and your application. And then that's enough that you take all of your initial on campus courses. And that isn't really enough to pay for the whole thing. So we are subsidizing it. We are paying for it. We're co financing your on campus studies. Why? Because we're very careful to screen all applicants to know they're going to be successful in the program. So we take on the risk and we screen carefully to know that it's not a big risk, that you will be successful. And then when you start the job practicum, then we have arrangements with the local bank to give you a loan to pay all of your program costs. And from those program costs, then you can pay back what you have owed us. And then you work in this full salary practicum, as I mentioned, practicum salaries are high. 
And then therefore here's, that's the feedback loop. From that, you're able to pay back this bank loan and your whole program is financed, okay? So what's the result? The result is that you are able to complete the MS degree. You get substantial, this almost two years or so work, US work experience at a top company. And you're able to pay off your program fees and, and have some savings depending on where you live, how much you spend, how much you make and so on. So this, the details of, of your finances in this loop would be something that you can figure out. Uh, there's online calculators we have and with our placement department. But it doesn't matter in some sense because you have a very low initial payment and then we work out all of the details with you as you go through the program. That's the structure. If you understand this, then you understand the algorithm of how it works. The coursework is a typical, in some senses, MS computer science degree. We have courses and you can see all of these on our university website for computer science and the names should be familiar to you. Web programming, enterprise software, algorithms, big data, and so on. We do have specializations in that. The specializations would be Java and related technologies. The program largely focuses on Java as do almost all graduate programs in the US, software development and software engineering. We also have specialization tracks in big data and in web and enterprise programming. We have a top level faculty. We have about over 20 to 27, including some part-time and visiting faculty, top level faculty, many with PhDs from the highest level universities, both in the US and around the world. And faculty also that go out and do consulting in top companies. So they'll know what current practice is, not just what they did some PhD study in so many years ago, but what's going on now? Uh, faculty have done uh, internships, excuse me, internship, but uh, consulting at big data companies at Microsoft, at Google, at E-Trade, at Perfect Progression Financial, and all these different large companies. Our students work throughout the US. As I said, uh, you have a choice of where you wanna work and what companies you apply to, including top companies that are named and familiar, but many others. In fact, over a thousand different companies in the US are where our students have worked. Our MIU campus, as I said, is located centrally in the US. Uh, we have uh, large new buildings where uh, we study and where the, the computer science program is. And you'll find the environment here. We're in a very small town, small, safe, friendly town. Uh, here's our computer science buildings and here's our student union. And Elaine will show a few more pictures of it in one of our computer science buildings here. More classes here in the library and another one just off to the left. We have students from around the world, as I said, 70, 80 different countries. And it's a very wonderful opportunity really to have this international education. This is our student center uh, where lunches and meals are served and other meetings are held. You'll enjoy our campus and you'll enjoy our environment here in the central US. So in conclusion, we have a unique program. We offer something that no one else has. The uniqueness is the block system. It's the academic degree, including professional experience, easy entry finances, self-financing through this CPT placement with high salaries, and growth of creativity and intelligence through this regular practice of the TM program in all classes with all students. And unique program has unique results, knowledge and experience integrated, and strong self-growth and finances. And on successful completion of the program, you will have earned your advanced degree, you will have gained valuable experience in the company and increased your happiness and your intelligence. And this is a, a huge thing. You have changed yourself. You've changed your ability to be an intelligent, smart, balanced, happy person for the rest of your life. It's a wonderful thing. And let me now invite uh, Elaine to come. And Elaine is the director of the program. And Elaine will then uh, give a, an overview of application. Uh, processes and admissions processes and requirements. 
and then we'll both be back to answer any questions you have. I, I wasn't able to watch the uh, comments while speaking, but we'll come back and answer all of them. Okay, uh, Elaine, uh, hello, hello. Yes, yes, uh, if you stop sharing your screen. I, I can... Yes, I will, you just hang on for a second, please. Go ahead. Okay, so I have been watching the questions. Uh, we've, I, some of those will be answered with my presentation and the rest of them we'll make sure to go through all of them uh, after I finish here. So I will share my screen. So um, as probably many of you know <laughs> and experience, the last year was very unusual and not so great with the pandemic going on. We had, we had to cancel the May 2020 entry um, and then have very low entries for August and uh, November. But starting February, embassies were opening up, things picked up. And uh, by May, this is the group of students that we had there, uh, 130 students representing, I believe it's about 32 different countries around the world. So we are, are back uh, to our high levels of uh, uh, enrollment in the program. And we definitely look forward to having many more Nepalese join us. We uh, do have a few, I believe seven, coming for the August entry, which we also think will be about 130 students. So, um, so I'll be going through the entry requirements um, and as well all the application uh, steps that you need to know and then some quotes uh, from some students, in, different students from different countries uh, with some photos. So, Entry requirements, you need to have a four-year bachelor's degree in computer science or a related field um, from an accredited college, university, or institute. Um, the related field, uh, someone asked about electrical engineering, that is a related field. There'll be even uh, further related, uh, not really even related, but as long as you have had some programming courses and some work experience in that area. Um, we will screen carefully and if we have any questions, we will have uh, a, one of our faculty interview you to make sure you have appropriate uh, programming background. Your GPA needs to be at a good average. We're looking for at least a B grade, uh, which here on the percent system is about 82% uh, percent, uh, for your average grade. And of course, English, you need to be able to speak English and understand English. Um, and most of our Nepalese have been quite good at that. So that's not normally a concern. We do like to see some, some professional programming work experience, looking at at least six, six months and more is uh, preferable. But we do actually uh, have accepted students with no work experience that come directly from graduating as long as they have done extremely well, probably A average in their grades, their English is very strong, um, then we can accept uh, without any work experience. But ideally you have been working professionally uh, as a program, as a developer. So this is our admissions team. We have a great group here that uh, look after all the aspects of the admissions processing. Um, this lady here, Erica, is the one that is, when you get to the final steps, helps you through that final uh, uh, processing steps to be accepted. So the admission steps, you first of all, you complete the online application, which is on our website, compro.miu.edu. There, and that's very fast. It's like a 10 minute application. You could fill it out as you're waiting here. It's uh, very, very simple. Just initial to get an idea, or the, if you, uh, the computer will screen automatically and uh, with your responses and should send you an immediate response if you have passed phase one of the application. Phase two is a two hour online programming test. 
um, although I believe for Nepalese that it's actually on paper. Um, and Madhav, sir, uh, he is the one that uh, proctors it. So you will be sent instructions of how to connect with Madhav and the dates that we have for that programming task. Um, you'll then be asked to send your transcripts and a resume, uh, uh, another form, personal information form with a couple of essays. You, uh, Madhav will be speaking with you to assess your English, to make sure he feels that your English is strong enough for the program. Then you will also learn this transcendental meditation technique that uh, my husband was talking about, uh, also with Madhav. He is the TM teacher uh, for our program in Nepal. You'll be, at that point, you'll be let to know what your initial payment is, and you would send uh, a bank statement showing that you or your family or a sponsor, somebody has that money. And finally, there's a, at the very end, a $50 application fee um, that can be paid either online or directly to Madhav. So a little bit more detail about the finances. I know a couple of people had questions about that. So the total program costs, which includes tuition, room and board, uh, plus student fees, is about 46,000. If you fail a course or have to take an additional course, then there is additional uh, costs to the program. But that's the initial uh, main program cost. Now the initial payment that you need to make when you arrive on campus will be anywhere between $3,000 and about $6,500. Uh, that'll be depending on the application, um, uh, reviewing your application, the strength of your application. Uh, I believe for Nepalese, I think it's normally somewhere around $4,000 to $5,000 that the Nepalese are asked uh, to, pay, to verify and pay. And again, that includes all your room, uh, your food on campus, uh, and uh, all any expenses, uh, academic expenses for the eight months on campus. It doesn't include for books, but I mean like um, student activities, fees, things like that. You also need an additional $2,000 for your own personal expenses. So for instance, if you're asked to uh, you pay $5,000 towards your tuition amount when you enroll, you would need to verify $7,000 because you need to have that $2,000 for your own expenses. That would be for books, for buying, you know, maybe warmer clothing, or if you have any, some medical expenses. We do uh, have medical insurance for our students, but there is uh, some uh, down payments or uh, payments that do need to be made. It is not covered, not 100% coverage. The remaining program costs, so if you paid 5,000, um, that means you have 41,000 left uh, to pay to the university. So, but those, um, that amount is not, you don't have to think about until you actually start your curricular practical training position, or as we're calling the internship position. So you're on campus for eight months, um, you've paid your $5,000 and you start looking for a job and maybe it takes you two, three, four months to find a job. You will have to look after, you know, your, where you're staying, if you're staying with a family member or a friend staying together. Um, you will look at, need to look after that cost, but you're not paying any more back to the university until you start your CPT position. Then you will take out a bank loan from a bank we have in town. And again, you don't pay anything until two to three months after your job has started. So we allow you a little bit of time to save some money, pay for your, you know, your housing and foods until then once a month, you will be paying, up, paying the bank loan back, okay? So Nepalese students have been in our program. This program has been going on since 1996. We've had 761 Nepalese have enrolled, 642 have graduated, and there's currently 46 Nepalese uh, enrolled in the program. 
It doesn't quite add up to 761. So there's there's a few that have transferred already. Uh, they're, they're not, so they're not in our system. Uh, but and uh, that's the majority of them. So this is a group of Nepalese that must have come in the February entry, judging by <laughs> their uh, coat, all the coats they're wearing. Uh, another few photos of some of our Nepalese students that have been on campus. Here's some graduating Nepalese with their families, uh, bringing their spouses. Um, thought you would enjoy that. Um, Krishna uh, Kamacharya, she was uh, one of our outstanding students for the uh, computer science in 2018-19. Very proud of her. Some other, uh, as we mentioned, we have students from many countries. Uh, usually every entry, there's about at least 30 different countries represented. So I wanted to show you some of these students and their comments about the program. So Mohamed Reski from Morocco, he's working at the Ford Motor Company. He, <clears throat> he said, as it was my first time going abroad, I had many concerns about this stuff. And MIU has a very helpful and professional admission staff that helped me a lot. There's also, has a multicultural environment. So I got the opportunity to get to know people from all around the world. MIU has a very good course structure where I learned advanced technologies in computer science, which helped me to join one of the biggest companies in the country. Also MIU provides consciousness-based education. So I had the chance to learn transcendental meditation, an awesome technique that helps remove stress and have a greater sense of clarity and productivity. So Ahmed or Jimmy from Egypt, he's a software development engineer three at Microsoft. At MIU, you have this kind of environment that not only educates you, but fosters you to achieve your goals. I love the block system. It's really nice, less stressful and more focused to be only in one class at a time, as you will have the chance to dig deep into one subject and learn a lot about that in a short amount of time. After two semesters, I, I had all the skills needed to secure an internship at Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, one of the largest banks in the USA. And now I'm at Microsoft. Gong Fang from Vietnam, he's working at eBay. In just less than a year, I got a job that I wouldn't dare to dream of, working for eBay as a software engineer. The Compro program itself is one of a kind. It gives you a once in a lifetime opportunity to become a high skill engineer in the US with a decent salary. Ask yourself, do you want to boost up your resume? Do you want to experience US culture or visit the world famous Yosemite Park? This is your chance. Whoever you are, come join me, I'm waiting. So uh, this is a group of our graduating students. We have graduation. Um, for everyone can return. They're all around the United States, but we have usually about 100 students returning. Um, in June is when we have our graduation and the faculty, you see uh, some of the faculty along the front here. Uh, another picture of our, Ju our, Juden <laughs> our Juro Student Center. Uh, the dining hall for the students is up here in that uh, top corner. Um, there's a big lecture hall that's uh, on the sort of main floor and below. Um, there's also a student cafe and, and uh, student lounge area here and the staff and faculty dining halls up here. This is a picture of the student dining hall. Most, most of these are our computer science students from, as I mentioned, all around the world. Uh, this is just a picture of a, uh, one of our classes, the advanced software development class with the uh, faculty there uh, enjoying the end of their class. So that's the end of my presentation. As you see, uh, for more information, you can go to our website, compro.miu.edu, um, or email to csadmissions.miu.edu. So... Thank you very much. I hope I answered some of your questions and um, we'll try and answer the rest of the questions now. Good, so uh, I answered most of the questions that were in the chat. 
Uh, so if you ask a question in the chat, you might look there and see if, uh, if there's something else that you uh, want to ask. Several of the questions were about things like, uh, can I apply with a three-year degree and a little bit about specific background experience. Uh, the three-year degree, uh, Elaine could answer on that. And about background experience, basically you have to have some experience in a systems programming language, Java, C Sharp or C++, not JavaScript, not MATLAB. Those are good experience, but in addition to a systems programming job and some experience in doing it. Uh, now, if you typically that comes from having some work experience, I, I have worked for so many years doing this and in, in programming as a software developer. So we look for that work experience because you're going to come to the US. And as I said, working, getting this job placement Academics, yes, it's good, we have that, but then you wanna go on to the job placement and practicum and they look at experience. They don't wanna just know, oh, I studied and I had three books and four projects and listened to everything my faculty said. So experience is very important. In some cases for a top level student from a top level university, uh, we will accept them anyway because they've shown to be at a very top level in all areas, but in general, Prior work experience is very valuable and important. And when I say important, it means important to us and to you, because when you get here, you want to get a job. It's part of the, you're not gonna get your degree without getting a job. And in fact, that's one of the valuable things that people look forward to and value most, that US work experience. So if our admissions representatives say, oh, you need to strengthen in this area or you need to know Java a little more, or you need to get some work experience. Uh, don't take it as, oh, it's a barrier. How can I get around that? Take that as experience, meaning we know what will make you successful. And you don't want to come to, and we do not want you to come unless you're going to be successful. So this is part of our screening and being careful to guarantee your success. Because as I said, we're financing a large part of your education. So we, your success is our success. We, we work together. So the admissions people know answers to all these questions that can help you. Elaine, did you want to comment on three-year degrees? Yes. <clears throat> so it is possible we can accept with a three-year degree as long as you've had two to three years of professional work experience that we can consider that as can be replacing that fourth year that you don't have. So your, your GPA will have to be high um, and you have to have had some strong professional work experience. In that case, we can accept three year degrees or you may have done a one year diploma a certificate in something else that can also replace the four year degree. Um, regarding the pro different programming, this, as I mentioned, the second step is the programming test, um, which has to be written in either C, C++, Java, or C Sharp. So you definitely have to know <laughs> one of those languages in order to get through the, the second stage of the um, application process. Um, Greg, there's a lot of questions here, but I don't see your answers in here, uh, in the question and answer. I don't. Well, I typed, I typed the answer uh, to all of them. Uh, so another one says, and I'm not sure if, uh, go to the top and it says open and answered. And under answered, you'll see there's 24 of them that have been answered. Uh, someone says, is there any age limitation? The answer is no, there's no age limitation uh, at all. Uh, another one says, what's the total credit hours? Total credit hours, uh, well, there's 10 CS courses plus another general course required. Each of those are three credit hours. So 33 is the typical credit hours. Uh, I'm just gonna go through a couple of these real quick here because others may benefit. Uh, if you think you have a question, you might also look at the answered column yourself. Uh, it says, uh, I have experience as a database administrator. 
but I know the basics of programming. Does it count? Yes, it counts. It's good, but no, it's not the same as programming. Uh, and you to come in, you need two things. You need knowledge of basic undergraduate CS areas. That's typically a CS degree, but as Elaine described, it could be a related field. And secondly, experience in software development and programming. Database administration is not software programming and development. You may have had that somewhere else. Uh, someone, a very important one, Sujran says, could you say what are the present quarantine protocols after arriving in the US? There aren't any national quarantine protocols in the US. On our campus, and Elaine could give some details. Okay, that Greg, that's not quite true. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, there are, we follow the CDC, which is Center for Disease Control um, guidelines for quarantine, which are for international students, it's 14 days or two weeks that you need to quarantine, uh, which we look after and make sure that you <laughs> will be doing when you're on campus. If you manage to be vaccinated and fully vaccinated and by, by vaccinations that are approved by the World Health Organization, then you only have to isolate for four days and um, we, we will test you uh, for coronavirus as well after the four days. So we're very, very careful. We've done extremely well on campus. There are no cases right now. Uh, actually, there's one case, <laughs> someone who just arrived <laughs> internationally. Um, but they're quarantined it's in their room. We look after bringing food to everybody. Uh, it's, um, you will give you all the guidelines once you get here, but- uh, we yeah, So that's what I was saying care. is that, that on campus, we have all of our, we have all the protocols in place. And if you're fully vaccinated, there are not any current requirements, although that can change at any time with new, new variants going around. But you know, on the airplanes and in travel, there are requirements that you, you have a mask. And when you get to your destination, you go into quarantine. Uh, There's someone asked the question about cloud computing. Um, meeting about cloud computing, but. Yeah. So I already, I already said, what do you mean? So, yeah, so we unless you want to talk about have cloud any computing. meeting about cloud computing and. Uh, someone says he's from Kenya and needs to connect with the TM team in Kenya. Uh, they're, you're in, from Kenya, you're probably not required to learn TM before you come, are you? Uh, I think it is required for Kenya, but when you apply, we give you the information, uh, or if you email, if you applied and you're from Nepal, or if you're, <laughs> I'm getting confused now, if you're in Kenya and you were in Kenya when you applied, you'd be sent the information about the TM teachers in Kenya. There are a few of them there. Okay. Uh, so I think we've covered most all of these. Let me scroll down to the bottom here. Should I be able to choose programming languages during programming exam? Yes, you can choose what language you use. Uh, someone from Vietnam, I'm from Vietnam and working. Can you apply? Yes, sounds good. <laughs> uh, Media requirements, but it's been a three years gap after my master's. Uh, in any personal situation like that, my degree is in this, or it's from there, it's been this time, or it's better to talk directly with someone from admissions uh, than, than have a group of, a large group involved in it. Uh, yes. so basically, you know, if you have a degree, especially computer science or related, um, then fine, apply. Just to, the simplest thing is just to apply because there's no cost to it. It takes, you know, five to 10 minutes to complete the application. You'll get an automatic response back. So if you're concerned or wondering whether you qualify, then uh, just apply. If, we're, if the computer algorithm isn't sure, maybe your degree is in something unrelated, then um, someone from our admissions office will be reviewing your application and then you know they will respond. So 
that's the simplest way rather than us trying to figure out every everyone's situation. Thank you. Someone asked three, two or three people to ask about coming with a spouse. Uh, and Elaine, you want to comment on that? Yes. Um, if your spouse can get a visa, yes, but yeah, um, we do not have housing on campus for families. So you would need to have additional money, which uh, if it's just a wife, it's 7,800 additional. So if you're asked to pay 5,000, you'd need to verify $12,800 to bring your spouse and to live off campus because you know there is a cost. It's, it's not only the housing you have to pay for, but food for the two of you. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, it's just up to you. And of course, getting the visa for both of you. <laughs> uh, visa is risky at that situation. Yeah, uh, it, it's, you know, to get an F1 visa, student visa, you really have to show ties to your home country. Of course, yeah. being, whatever. The, Nepal so it's you're very good living. if they take their spouse after they are placed an in internship after eight months. That's, that's what I usually recommend because then you have time, you're making, you're, you can focus on your studies, you're making money. So it's easier um, to, you know, have your family come with you. But if you're wondering whether, you know, you wanna make sure that your family is gonna be able to get a visa, you can, you know, take them into the embassy, try, you know, try and get a visa to begin with, but not have them come until you start your CPT position. That's a possibility. But the main thing with the embassy is to show your ties. Well, one, that you really want to be a student, that you're not just going to the U.S. to work, and that you have ties to Nepal, that you will be returning to Nepal. So sometimes when you're bringing your family, it's kind of an indication that you're maybe thinking more long-term, so. But the admissions office will do, uh, and I believe Madhav as well, will do a practice interview with you. So they'll pretend they're the, <laughs> the visa officer and ask you questions and see how you respond. And if they feel you, you know, not responding correctly, um, they will advise you on, on you know, something a little bit better way of responding. Okay, uh, so let's see, it says, while we're having a parallel DE uh, and full-time job, how, how will our daily routine be like? It's a good question and an important one. And will it be stressful balancing both? And the answer is, it will be a challenge, but it is set up to not be stressful. Uh, and, and how, how you balance that will determine what the effect is on you. That the, uh, the DE courses are set up to require about 10, nine to 12, so let's say average 10 hours a week of study. Uh, and that's mapped over the same equivalent activities and learning outcomes as an on-campus course. And so 10 hours a week, you could choose to spend uh, an hour every night or for f five nights, that's five hours. So maybe between eight and nine o'clock at night after dinner and the kids are in bed or two hours a night and you're done or one hour a night and then three hours on Saturday and two on something like that. Uh, so you have to, you do have to allocate the time and manage your time, uh, but that's just the requirement to do that for that amount of time to gain two areas of benefits really, the benefit of the professional experience and the benefit of the online degree. If something comes up and you have a challenge, then the DE faculty can give you some leeway in assignments or time and so on. But I would emphasize, this is not a US work job placement program. This is an academic degree program Someone earlier had asked a question about, is this just training for work? No, it's a graduate degree program and the courses are rigorous. 
and they have in-depth, you'll, you'll enjoy that. That's what you would expect. That's what you would want from an academic degree. Uh, and uh, during that time of finishing these courses, you do have it, it, it's you do have to make that time commitment to do it. And then when you're done, then you finish that and you can still be working in CPT and, uh, and then complete your degree. Okay. Uh, I wanted to uh, say a little bit about the data science chat because I see there's a few questions in this last one. Um, I think is important for the students to know. So we have, it, there are, the introductory courses for learning Java programming if you, uh, that all students take, one course. It could be two courses if you don't know Java yet. Um, then there's eight more courses that you need to take. Uh, of those eight, we have four courses that are in the data science track, big data, big data technologies, machine learning, and uh, data mining course. So that's, not quite enough to, to actually be hired as a data scientist. So our students that do go on that data science track, we encur encourage those students to take that track that are already strong programmers. Because what usually happens is they get a, a job that as a programmer, but at a company that wants them to start moving or are involved in some big data uh, analysis, and they start moving in that direction of, of working with a data scientist who's, you know, usually had many years of experience and moving in that direction. So we don't say that you're going to get a job as a data scientist. Tip, this program is Java programming. Um, you get a job as a programmer, but many companies are looking for, you know, knowledge of big data. And so you kind of start moving in, in that direction. Um, so hopefully that answers that question. Someone asked about the visa rate, I guess. Um, I don't actually know yet how many uh, students were denied visas. We do know there were seven for the August entry. We do know that seven got their visa. Madhav? Yes. How many were denied? Their yes, uh, five, five are denied so far. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you say, seven have, been, seven have received their visa and one from the MBA program also succeeded. So mm -hmm. we have eight all together, seven for a compro. Okay, so uh, a little bit more than 50%, which is <laughs> yeah. pretty good. It's not great, but it's a lot better than it has been. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. we're happy about that. There's still a few are coming, oh, we don't know, in, in a few days. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think we've covered most of the important points there. Uh, and I would say that if you have any further questions, uh, you have the uh, the online contact information for the admissions group and you have the uh and you can also uh contact e elaine if you wish to send an email via admissions she'll help help to make sure that they are answering all of your questions like that and we uh you know we're, we're happy to have connected with you and Hope that you will go ahead. As Elaine said, all these questions of, I have this much GPA or I have this degree or, you know, all of that. Those are all admissions questions. And the admissions department is really well, <coughs> well suited to help you answer any of those. Um, one more thing, someone asked about the different entries that we have. So yes, we have, <laughs> we have four entries a year. Or August, um, we call it November, but end of October, end of January, end of April uh, are the four entries a year. And we, we stop processing applications about a month before, sometimes a little bit more. Um, we have a limit now on how many that we can accept in one entry. Um, so 
I'll encourage you to apply early. It's still difficult to get uh, an interview date. Mara has told me about less than 50% are able to get a date for that next entry. So, but you just, if you don't get, um, <laughs> if you can't get an appointment for the August entry, we just forward your application to the November entry and then we forward it to the next entry. The only thing is that it actually gets to a year. Um, you will have to take the programming test again. We only, the programming test is only good for one year. Uh, we wanna make sure that you really still <laughs> do know how to program. And we may ask for an updated resume as well if it, you know, time goes on. But, you know, you've already sent your transcripts, you've already done the application process. It's just a couple little things that when it gets to about a year. Yeah, if they have some small, small questions, uh, I, I'm here to help all these students and I have been helping them practicing visas and all those things. So the students are welcome to contact me. I have been helping all the students in the last many, many years. So please do not hesitate to contact me. I'm in Kathmandu itself. So if any guidelines you need and I can help you, I can provide you that. So I see many, many questions that the university dean and the directors uh, don't have time to answer all those questions, I guess, for these small, small things. So I'm here to help you all the times and my mobile is always on and I never leave emails unanswered. And also the mobile, even if I have some missed calls, I always help our students from Nepal so all of you are welcome to contact me. So Madhav, can you uh, perhaps make sure to put your email and your mobile into the uh, chat group so people will see what it is and, and have that for reference? Okay, okay sure, sure, sure. And, and I would also just say that the point that, that he has made is, is really quite important that uh, visas and embassy and interviews and all that, it's always kind of a stressful thing when you're dealing with the government. Uh, but but yeah. we have a lot of experience over 25 years of this program and with, you know, multiple, many, many years with Mr. Deepak organizing things. So we, we know what what kinds of things they're interested in and, and, and what might, just like a job interview, there are certain things that are, maybe aren't so good to say uh, that you might not be aware of. And there are certain things that they're looking for. So it's not, it's not try to cheat the interview or anything. It's just a matter of being intelligent about how to present yourself and your information in the way that they are looking for. And he's quite expert in that. And our admissions people here also will do practice interviews with you and help to coach you, Not again, not to try and subvert the system, but how to help them understand what you, what you are and what your situation is. So I think with that, we will close.